So in this video, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about one of the weirder pens I purchased in the past couple of months, and that's this Stadler Concrete pen. Uh, the name is called the Stadler Concrete, uh, and it's actually made of a concrete material. The uh, pen itself, did, I showed it on a couple of videos here and there. I've been using it for some time. It's a kind of a strange, interesting pen. Uh, it's made of this high-performance concrete material, uh, Stadler says it's true concrete. Uh, it's, you know, obviously a special blend. It's not the same stuff your driveway is made out of or something like that. And there's no binder or filler like little stones or sand you might see in a typical concrete. Uh, it's actually really smooth. It almost seems like a plastic, but it has a lot more weight than you would expect. And it has some natural variation from one pen to the next. So uh, you can tell it's not exactly a standard plastic pen. I bought two of these, so I can tell you that it's definitely, uh, they have some differences from one to the next. And then obviously you see some things that would happen to a concrete or a stone-like material, that little kind of imperfection there that wouldn't happen from plastic. Plastic doesn't just chip like that. So the pen sells for about $30 if you're buying it in the U.S., a little bit cheaper if you're buying it from Japan, but then obviously you have to pay for the shipping. Uh, and it's not a Japanese pen, right? It's a German pen, but it went on sale in Germ uh, in sorry in Japan ahead of going on sale in the U.S. So I've been using this one for a few months now. Uh, it is a retractable pen. It uses a Parker-style G2 refill, which you get at just by opening this piece here. It's a pretty standard pen once you actually kind of look at the function, but in its form, it's, it's obviously uh, has some really interesting design choices made and the material itself is the most interesting choice. It's a larger pen and that's sort of befitting the price. It's one, two, three, four, five, almost six inches long. So it's, here's it next to a Pilot G2 Limited. It really kind of dwarfs that pen, which is not a small pen. It's also large in its diameter. It's uh, over a half inch wide. And you can check out unsharpen.com for more specs. I'll get those up in a few days. So like I said, it's a retractable pen, which combines a metal front piece, flat metal clip with those little kind of window stamps in it, and a metal button. It has a little plastic at least I believe it's plastic. I'm not sure it's, if it's stone or not, or concrete or not. A little finial there with that Stadler helmet guy. And then the barrel itself. It is, you can see, the barrel is kind of a strange shape. It's basically hexagonal, but it just, it seems to be like a little bit off. Just like kind of skewed. And I think that was obviously done on purpose. It's, it's meant to be kind of a strange shape. You see one wide face here, small face. Uh, this appears to be an extra large face, then a medium face and another medium face. So it's asymmetrical there. It goes from that basically rough hexagonal design into little rectangular or round, sorry, uh, tri triangular or rounded off tapers towards the bottom. So it's just a really interesting shape, non-standard, of course. And then there are these middle pieces here, which I think are plastic. So basically right here and at the top, it appears they have pieces of plastic there just to keep everything together. And then it goes back into the concrete. And we could see right here, it's clearly the concrete, which we have actual chips. I don't think I dropped this or anything like that. I think that is just a, came from the factory like that, but it might've happened due to use. The concrete itself, it's quite smooth. When you feel it, it feels like there's some sort of coating on it, maybe a lacquer. Uh, it's hard to say. It doesn't feel rough. This doesn't hurt my hand at all. It's not wearing down my fingers or anything. So it's definitely smooth. You could see that there's like some little chips here, like on that E there, uh, which is cool. Like a concrete, if it was formed and then kind of, uh, I guess it was probably etched or, or uh, somehow drilled out, then you would get chips at the E and things like that, right where the corner isn't as strong as the rest of the concrete. So it's understandable that would happen. Uh, it actually gives the pen some character in my eyes. You see there's some natural texture 
from one to the other. And I bought two of these, so I could tell you that it does vary from one to the other. And there is uh, some signs of wear at the corner. So you can see the corner does not have the same level of gloss as the rest of the pen. I'm guessing that is going to continue over time, and the pen is going to accrue more and more character. So it's got a nice weight to it. Clearly, it's a well-made pen. The click is fine. Really nothing exceptional. I would hope for a pen of this price. It could have made it a little bit more firm, a little bit more clean sounding, but it's definitely not a problem. The uh, For a second, I wanted to talk about stone pens. So you would think this is like this uh, hyper original thing, but there's a few other pens made of some form of stone or some form of concrete. Uh, the most famous of them is the Visconti, uh, the, uh, I'm blanking on the name, the Visconti, uh, oh yeah, the Homo Sapiens, which is a fountain pen, rollerball, ballpoint. Uh, that's a high end. That one's made of a, a composite made of uh, concrete. Uh, sorry, not concrete, uh, made of uh, volcano stones, rather. And that one is, that's like a five or $600 pen, so way in a different league. And then recently we looked at the Uni or the Uni Mitsubishi Limex, which is made of sort of a, uh, a plastic type composite made of stone, like stone that's bind together to resemble a plastic. Uh, so that's the Limex. And there's a few other manufacturers that have concrete pens now. But I haven't seen too many that use this really smooth finish like this. You can see it actually has kind of a, uh, a gloss to it. And that's a combination of a very smooth finish and I'm sure some form of coating. Being a rather expensive pen, it comes with a gift box. Uh, there's not really too much to show with the gift box. It's, it's nice, you know, it's uh, on a shelf. It would look rather nice. And it's just a sort of plastic housing. And then you have a metal box with a sort of concrete design printed on, and then that sort of little uh, foam holder. There's really nothing else to it. And there's no top with this, so it's not a true gift box, uh, but it is nice that they went the extra mile there. The pen uses a standard Parker G2 style refill, so you could put whatever you want in there. Uh, I have shifted over from the standard Stadler, which is a kind of a boring ballpoint refill. It's really not extraordinary at all. It's kind of an old school ballpoint. It's fine, but there's really nothing to note about it to the Schmidt Softline, which is a uh, not quite a hybrid, but a uh, it's a low viscosity ballpoint which we'll see in a second. Uh, the point being that the refill that comes with this is fine, but in not any way extraordinary, and you can get any G2 refill in there, so Parker-style refill in there. So you could really upgrade this pen with your Easy Flow or what have you. The refill that comes with it, the standard Stadler refill, is no different than the standard Rotring refill or standard Tombow refill. It's just a, a functional, completely fine ballpoint refill, like an old-school ballpoint. So this is the concrete, and uh, it's a nice writer. Again, it's a, it's a heavy pen. It's a large pen. It's not something I would use for hours on end, and the asymmetrical design of the front is a little bit strange because when you grab the pen, it doesn't always feel the same. Sometimes you grab it here on a flat face, sometimes a little triangle, smaller flat face, medium triangle, smallest flat face, tiny triangle. Uh, there's a larger triangle. It's just like uh, it was sort of haphazardly done in a way that is cool, but I'm not really sure that it's any, uh, it really does much for the comfort of the pen. You know, some face here is going to be more comfortable from you, for you than the other faces. And having to search to find that or kind of grab the wrong one is, uh, and have it kind of push your hand in a direction not, not really push your hand, but it, it's basically you could feel your grip gravitating towards what's more comfortable. So you have to spin the pen a few times to figure out where you want it. What that naturally causes me to do is just to hold it lower because I'm searching for something consistent, which ends up being here as opposed to grabbing a little higher where maybe uh, it's pushing me or makes me want to feel like I should turn it till I find the right facet. And I usually go towards one of the rounded areas anyway. So I could hold it higher up, like here, but still be on a nice, round, somewhat consistent surface. So 
In summary, I would say this Stadler Concrete is a really cool gift type pen. I think it's uh, something that you would give someone a reasonable price, about $30. And it's just really interesting. It's fun to have on your desk, but it's not that practical. It's, uh, again, it's very, very cool, I think. And the concrete is awesome. And I would be like thrilled. In fact, I have gifted one of these to someone. And I think it was a, a pretty cool gesture, if I may say so myself. But uh, as for like day to day use, I, I don't find myself using this pen that often. It's a little too heavy, a little too large. And then the uh, just the shape of it, I can't quite figure out. But if you want something to keep on your desk and grab occasionally and uh, raise some eyebrows if people see it, it's a really nice pick. So that's the Stadler Concrete. Thanks for watching.